Hello, and welcome to Varm Vlog Solo. And that little joke that Gene Bajalon put in the beginning of my intro in the grim darkness of the 21st century. That grim darkness feels particularly real tonight. You may have noticed that I haven't done any special shows on the Palestinian situation, partly because I haven't been able to get experts, um, partly because I have not loved people not having message discipline on this issue, about how they address it, about how they frame it. I've also stated publicly um, many times that I think flying flags of solidarity our solidarity statements are not particularly meaningful. They're more about you than they are about the people you show solidarity to. You might have some marginal impact on public opinion, but as I've said many times, since the War Powers Act, which was supposed to reform conditions given to the president under the UN treaties, um, that the movement of the state capacity for international violence, AKA war, has been moved increasingly into the least democratic parts of the government, um, into the military, the administrative state, into the executive office. There's remarkable continuity between administrations on this issue. There's been remarkable continuity between administrations and all these issues. But tonight, in lieu of a mass shooting here at home, in lieu of a hurricane, in lieu of seeming a thousand atrocities, there is a blackout bombing. And that's enough for me. I lived in Egypt for two years. A little over that. It was a hard time in my life. And I did a lot of traveling in that time period. I spent a lot of time at the Egyptian airport. And I met a lot of Palestinians stuck in the Egyptian airport. Now, many of you know I'm of some Jewish descent. Not all. I'm, uh, you know, I'm not ethnically homogenous like that as a person or in my background. And I've been quiet on this issue. But I think there are times where you have to speak even for yourself. Because there are times where you have to lay down a moral line. You're not screaming to change the world at this point. You're just saying something to keep your moral compass clean and clear. Now, I've been angry at, all, angry at all kinds of people for their analogies, for the way they talk about Palestine. Been more mad at people who've been saying things like, you know, go to Islamic countries and see what they're like. Well, motherfucker, I did. And a Salafist store owner helped me more than once when I was hurt, I fell in the street, he helped me up. Gave me water. Gave me something from his store, even he didn't have to do that. Um, when things got hairy during some of the, the consolidation of the counter-revolution and Ma'adi. Muslim friends and Coptic Christian friends would Keep me out of the way. Tell me where not to go. Even let me hide in their place. Yeah, I know what Muslims are like. They're like any other people. And they're more, hosp more hospitable than many people I know here. As a general rule. So don't come at me with that. I've also been mad at people making grand statements about the political effect they could have here in America. I've heard everything from 
did Hamas in the culture war to critical and military support for Hamas. To make this about Hamas is to lose the point of the context of October 7th. Yes, what happened with civilian atrocities. I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to selectively quote Franz Fanon to try to get around that either. But I'm also going to say it happened in the context of an apartheid situation that has been getting worse since 2008. It happened in the context of a situation that was engineered to set up a civil war in Palestine, which led to the separation of the West Bank from Gaza, and then Gaza being alienated. To make it about Hamas, one way or the other, loses that context. And let me give you more of that context. Gaza is 2 million people in 150 miles. They're cut off from their traditional moons of, of making a living which is all farming and access to the ocean. Now, that would have been changed under modernity anyway, more than likely, but they cannot do that under the current situation. Gaza has been an open-air prison since the Sinai Intifada in 2014. In the meantime, most of Syria which is being bombed by all kinds of people right now, Israelis, Turk, Turkish people, uh, Turkey's bombing parts of parts of Kurdish control, Syria, uh, the U.S. bombed several camps of of Iran-backed militias. Um, I put those in quotations because I honestly don't know. I suspect that probably is some truth to that, but the entire region has been using Syria as a pincushion for bombs for over a decade. And I've seen the aftermath of that too. And it's getting so bad, even liberal outlets like CNN, which took a very pro-Israeli stance in the beginning, are getting kind of skeptical of the Biden administration on this. So yes, I think most of your statements are about you, but there are times to make statements because some things are just wrong. The Gazans are pinned in an area beyond the Negev 150 miles. Their population is almost majority under 18. Most of the, the, there has not been an election in Gaza for leadership since 2006. So even saying that Hamas represents them is a big open question since the majority of the population weren't old enough to vote for them the last election that was had. Now, we can get all nuanced about what led here, about the Oslo Accords, about Yasha Arafat not making a deal with Ahut Barak. We can, we can talk about this to no end. And if you don't know that history, you should look it up. You should also quit talking about things like, well, you know, neither nationalism is good for the Palestinian workers. In Gaza, what? Palestinian workers are good. A whole lot of the economy is sustained by vague remittances that are very hard to get in and out. Even Palestinian labor has not been utilized in that way. They've been treated as a surplus population. And I hate to tell you what usually happens to surplus populations. Why do you think our prisons are so full? Since it doesn't do much about the crime rate. You don't believe me? I mean, people who talk about, you know, catch and release in America and ignore uh, that we have more people in prison 
than any other society in human history. What do you think happens? All right. In a settler colonial context, but even in any nation. The logic of this is brutal. And it is not inevitable. It is not. But it is common. The same thing shocked the conscience. I'm going to read the report to CNN. The health ministry in Hamas control of Gaza has published a report listing the names of more than 6,000 documented deaths in Gaza since October 7th, terrorist attacks on Israel. After the U.S. President Joe Biden questioned the reliability of the Palestinian casualty figures. The report stated that between October 7th and the 26th, 7,028 Palestinians were killed, including... 2,913 children. And the deaths were blamed on Israeli military aggression. And it said it for the 281 bodies had not yet been identified. The ministry said that the actual number of dead is likely to be much higher than stated in the report. The list of the 6,747 uh, 6, names gives the sex, age, and identity card number of each victim and an apparent effort to bolster the credibility of its data in face of challenges from the U.S. and Israel. Now, I don't think, as I've said, statements or popular opinion uh, really has that much effect on war unless the military starts to lose. But let's be honest here. Most war is a meat grinder to civilians, but this is a meat grinder to to a population that is 50% under 18, uh, has not had any real election, is cut off from most resources, power, et cetera, uh, has now been bombed for three weeks. Uh, um, there was a huge fight even to get humanitarian aid in. Um, How do you think this is going to go? What do you think this is? Collective punishment is the mildest thing you could say. And ending apartheid through ethnic cleansing is probably the most accurate. And what are the Palestinians to do? Which is why I don't talk about Hamas. Right? It's not the time. The time will be later when either this apartheid situation has ended or unfortunately large numbers of Palestinians are killed and martyred. Traumatizing society and making the possibility for any kind of peace Two state or one state, binational, possible. Our LARPing here does not change that. But at least it does show people have a moral character. The reason why I decided to speak on this is to put it in the context and to make what is essentially a moral as much or more than a political statement. I don't have a lot of control over how my tax dollars, that's not even how it really works, goes to fund other countries' wars. I don't, um, I know that there's uh, 2,000 Marines in Israel right now, which are probably there to advise and also to create a liability for Hezbollah and anything attached to Iran attacking to possibly commit to a larger war thus as a threat. That's a real thing. I also am not going to appeal to like workers of the world here because Palestinian workers haven't allowed to, been allowed to be workers in Gaza. I 
But to put this in the context for you, um, yes, more Jews were killed in one day on October 7th during Sukkot than has happened since the Shoah. However, and this is not to belittle what I just said. Fourteen thousand people. were killed. A kibbutz and a concert, etc. And I knew one of them. Not well. We weren't friends. I wasn't close to them. But one of them was from Utah. Okay, so that, that it means something to me. But from 2008 to 2021, there were 6,407 documented Palestinian fatalities. This is documented. Most of which in, were in Gaza, about 1,300 of which were in the West Bank. In three weeks, that number had doubled. There was an attempt to tell one million people to evacuate to where? In northern Gaza. Where? Gaza is already the most densely populated area on earth. Two million people. And I'm going to remind you half of which are under 18, and a 150-mile strip of urbanized desert around Gaza City and Jabalia. and Khan Yunis, with a highly militarized border, On the Egyptian end, I ask myself all the time the same thing that a lot of people say that Jews ask themselves after the show up could they live amongst these people and trust them again? And that was the whole argument for the creation of the state of Israel from the Zionist perspective, from Herzl to, B to Ben Gurion. I'm not gonna get into the left's own bizarre history in its relationship to Israel or make up just so, so stories about what Soviet and Chinese leaders did there. You should look it up, it's important to know. But counterfactuals right now aren't helpful. You do not live in that world. You live in the world that you're in. Those exercises are exercises for clarity and clarity only. So me being mad about leftist message discipline are people spouting just hateful and ethno chauvinist shit. towards Palestinians and Muslims in general is irrelevant to. I'm going to ask you, do you think it is fair All right, or good, or it's going to fix anything, or bring any of those people back, or bring them, or get those hostages free? For a regional war to break out on the back of, say, I don't know, 
a million dead. We've already seen reports of West Phosphorus. We've already had hospital sh uh, showing explosions. We've seen it justified by people claiming that Hamas bases are under them. It's almost impossible to know. And yes, there's barbarism everywhere right now. Things are spiraling out of control. I've said this about multipolarity many times, and I will say it again. Multipolar war was like rain. It can flood us out and wipe us all away. Or we can use it to restructure a fairer and more just world. But it's going to be what we make of it. And it's unstable. So what this means for the future, who knows? And so, no, I'm not going to turn my show about this because I don't feel like profiteering off of a conflict. Right? This statement won't be monetized. This is not for entertainment. The apartheid has to end. And we have to do what is in our power, whatever little it is, to try to make sure that this does not end in an ethnic cleansing. And so I can't say, and I'm not interested in saying which political faction of the Palestinians we should rightly support or not. I'm also not interested in telling Palestinians what they should and should not do. But I know the odds are not in their favor. And then a story. This is very personal for me told you that I met a lot of Palestinians when I was living abroad. I even met them uh, when I was in Korea. And all my interactions with Palestinians, and there are many, I heard one anti-Semitic comment. One. It's amazing to me, honestly. Maybe people in good behavior. Maybe they weren't. Who knows? It's not my place to judge. But I'm just saying it so you know that's for the context. I taught uh, an Egyptian girl whose family um, uh, was partly from Jabalia, outside of Gaza City. And she saw her uncle, I was told later, by some Egyptian friends uh, get shot in the Southern Intifada. She was, uh, she was a sixth grader. She would be happy and joyful and then sometimes just go catatonic or just start crying. And she'd go back to being helpful and joyful. Children are, resi are resilient after all, but there's only so much you can ask. We need a ceasefire and we need this apartheid to end because I don't want to have to deal with looking at a child and feeling helpless about what my own government is involved in. I don't have to make any analogies to other political situations. I don't have to pretend that 
most of the Israelis can go back to Europe since 61% of them aren't from Europe originally anyway. But it has to end. Palestinians deserve freedom as much as anybody else. We cannot expect people who have been barbarized not to show the signs of it. What that looks like, I don't think any of us knows. And while the international community will have to take part and however this ends up being dismantled, um, although it looks like it's taking part in the worst way it could happen, people learning to live together is something that people are going to have to do. And for all of us, it's going to be a lesson as things go forward. Because sadly, I don't think this kind of stuff is gonna end anytime real soon. But just so you know where I stand, just so I don't have to do shows on this to try to catch your interest by talking about Israel-Palestine all the time. To try to pretend to be an expert I know a lot of things, but most of what I know is just from reading the same news most of you read. I just read it from other countries in English and sometimes in Hebrew. Even even the support for the ground invasion has dropped from 61% to 49% in Israel itself, although what that means is hard to say. But some things are wrong. And I don't think the statement's gonna change the political world. I don't think it's gonna change much for the Palestinians. I don't think our solidarity statements, our flags or whatever are gonna do much. But at least, as young people can hear this, as future generations can learn from us who fucked up and didn't stand up when we could have in the past, we can at least say what is wrong now. It's a part that has to end. Write your senators, your Congress people, doesn't do much, but it does something. Give aid to things that you can give aid to. Doctors Without Borders and Medicine for Palestine tend to be what I tend to trust. You have a responsibility to read up about it, but be message disciplined on this. Don't blurt out. You don't have to be nuanced. This may not be the time for that. We can do that later. Collective punishment is wrong. Ethnic cleansing is wrong. The horror is done to people almost 100 years ago does not justify it now. Particularly when those people being brutalized aren't the people who committed the horrors in the first place. So don't bring up the Shoah as part of this. We can go back to debating how we got here and what the best actions are once the worst of the of the bombings and the massacres are over. 
What is wrong is wrong. And what is being done in Gaza is wrong. I have nothing else to say. Fight this. And then resist this. Help in this. In any way that you can do so and feel your conscience. Be respected. Thank mm -hmm. you.